Okay guys, uh, welcome to the foundation of poultry judging. My name is Travis Odell. I'm the Ag Ed instructor at Quita, Oklahoma, uh, going into year nine. Uh, kind of background to this contest, I learned um, some of the poultry science stuff coming out through Dr. Edwards before I went on block. Taught a little bit, a little bit when I was at Porter, uh, doing my student teaching. Taught a unit over poultry, didn't teach a contest. Fast forward, get a job at Coweta. Um, my first year at Coweta, we didn't do poultry science. Kids didn't want to do it. Second year I did it. This is a contest area that I feel like we get the pink sheet at our district meetings and you look at areas where you can go be competitive. This is a contest I feel that you can do that. Yes, there are only maybe 10 to 12 teams a year at the state contest. However, with the right kids, you can be top five all day long. Um, just those six years that I've done this contest at Coweta, take out one year because of COVID, first year not having it. We've been fifth, three times state runner up. We've won it once. We've been third. We went and represented Oklahoma at nationals in 2018. Come out of that national contest with the. Just a quick question, depending on what you're feeling, we could move you to 107 where it's cooler if you would like to be down there. We're good, we'll, we'll, we'll finish in here. I already set it up. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, so we go to nationals, come out of nationals and that year we finished fourth in the state. A lot of veterans from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri come up to you as a young teacher, first time going as a competing and they're like, hey, good job. That's the highest placing Oklahoma school has been in a while. You know, top 10 was good, but you break the top five, that was really good. So that kind of lit the fire to go drive and compete more in this. For me, this contest is very simple. A lot of people get sidetracked. This is your poultry Bible, okay? This is the seventh edition, if you want to write this down. Texas A&M sells this manual. This is the seventh edition, which is currently, I hope, being rewrote. I tried to call before... This workshop the other day, couldn't get a hold of anybody for the eighth edition. So this manual, I'll give you a number that you might be able to call, 979-845-6601. Where do you say the book was from? Texas A&M. I think you can find it under their poultry science department is in charge of this. They'll write the book. You can order it. You used to be able to find it on National FFA. It's not there no more. Um, so you have to go, kind of go look. So this is the seventh edition. If you pull it up, if you Google it right now, it's gonna say it's expired, it ended in 21. We still use this content, this book for 22. Cool thing about this, this is a test. And we have these CDE areas where there's tests involved and you don't know what to look at. This manual breaks it down for you. Odd years, even years. It tells you what to look at to study to be successful. You focus on those areas. Don't worry about the rest of the book. Part of this book is year round, meaning what I mean by that, that info is gonna be odd and even. So like anatomy, both years, okay? A section that'll be different might be nutrition, it'll be a uh, odd year, but we talk about broilers, turkeys, and hatcheries. Is an even year, so that's material that swaps. It tells you what to study. You tell those, your kids that you're training, hey, study these sections. Kevin Berenberg over at Arkansas, at Lincoln, Arkansas, has told me, you've learned this material. What makes you a better teacher learning this material? If you write your own test. If you just rely on a contest to gather your test banks, you'll never learn this material. I wrote tests for Roland, Colcord, Connors, it made me a better test writer because I can go through here now and it, the littlest subject you think, oh, that's not important, makes the best test question to throw kids off. Um, Richard Jenkins at Westfield, his kids got to see one of my tests that my kids seen. There's questions that maybe us as ag teachers hadn't seen all year because of that. So this manual helps you, breaks down the contest all the way through. Those of you kind of come in late, there's two sheets over here. You may want to grab it, it might help you. Um, Josh, if you want to hand those up to the top real quick. 
Thank you, sir. One of those sheets, it breaks down the grading, and I do apologize for that. I should have been more prepared. If you want to flip it over on the back, it breaks it A, B, C, and no grades. Here's how I train my kids. This is the bread and butter aspect, meaning your 10 carcasses and parts, you don't drop any of these. This is where your points are valuable, okay? Um, so we talk about USDA grade A, most everything on a breast and a leg is gonna be a quarter inch cut. So anything that's quarter inch, think of a eraser of a pencil, you're good. It's still gonna be a USDA grade A. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Quarter inch cut on the legs and breasts. So I'll pick it up. I'll wash my hands in a minute. So like if this was in a contest hanging up and you had just a little quarter inch eraser, okay. that would be a, still a USDA grade A. Okay. okay. Um, I'll give you my email at the end. I can send you guys this if you're interested and make it easier for you. One thing with poultry science, you are dealing with raw birds, so sometimes, you know, hand sanitizer, Lysol does the trick. Um, so, bigger birds, state contests, or turkeys. Freaks kids out. Got turkey poppers in them, they're like, oh, it's got a defect. You just bump your grades up. Still graded the same way for a USDA, the USDA grade A, you just bump it up. Inch and a half elsewhere on smaller chicken carcasses like this, two inch on turkeys. They can have one disjoint, meaning they just got a joint popped out, no broken bones. Wing tips, this is how I teach my kids and it is silly. Wing has three parts, the tip, the flat, and the drumette. Basically think the tip is your wrist. It's just cut off right there, first joint, that's an A. Bs, since we're talking about wings, second joint, it's missing that flat portion. So thank you, you're missing the middle of your arm. You cut it off at your elbow. C's, you cut it off up here at your collarbone. So they think your whole shoulder's gone. Okay, so that's how I train my kids. That They always remember, you'll see them in contests going. That's how they train themselves. Don't worry about parts, same process. Grade it the same, A, B, C, and no grades. Grade B carcasses, more than a third exposed flesh. So you take the total area of that part. For instance, that is a boneless, skinless split breast on the end right here on the table. It has no skin. It's missing, so that would be more than a third exposed flesh. Be USDA grade C. You would bump it to a C. B is going to have within that third. You can add total area. So if you have a piece of skin missing on one side, on the other, you can sometimes lump that together. If it's more than that third, you bump it to a C. If it's less, you keep it a B. Two disjoints, no broken, or one disjoint, one broken, non-protruding. One thing that's not on that C side, you may write this down, any broken protruding bone is automatic C. It does not matter, it's gonna to go to a C. The exception to that is if there's missing meat. There's missing meat, and when I say missing, like think of a quarter, a chunk cut out, gone, it's a no grade. Missing meat's a no grade. There's some other things to make no grade, like tail cuts, I don't want to confuse it with that. That's kind of, if you train a team, you have questions, I'll be gladly to help you answer those questions, but that's kind of getting more in depth without having a carcass in front of you to show you, okay? but I believe the front half of that page breaks it down really well. For an A, you're gonna be cut down the base of the tail, the width of the, the tail of the chicken, a little bit to the hips. That's how you determine that. If you get wider than that feather track of that base of that tail, it's a no grade, because you're cutting too wide, you're cutting into the thigh. So there's your tricks there. This is your grading, this is bread and butter. You get 10 carcasses, might be six hanging carcasses, four parts, five and five, Easy 50 points. Now, just like some contests, you can pick up partial points. If you're off a grade, you might still get some points. So that happens. So I feel like this is an important element of that poultry contest. The test is also the important element. 100 question test, or excuse me, 100 point test. Um, I feel like that's an important element. That's where you win the contest. And so that is the difference. So again, different parts. I wanted this to be kind of more hands-on. And so 
This is one a poplar cut. Um, just real quick, pull the group. How many of you think this is a leg quarter that you can grill on the grill? Just show of hands. Very good, very good. This is actually a leg, okay? Leg quarter and leg look very similar. The only difference, one's got a backbone, one doesn't. Same thing with the thigh. Um, if you guys want to kind of gather around, come down and look at these parts. These are some of the, there's 30 parts you have to grade. These are 10. The breast cut alone can give you 10. There's a third of your parts so that you have to ID. Down here, I have a thigh with a backbone. Why do I know it's a thigh with a backbone? It has a tail. If it has a tail present, it's got to have a backbone. Okay? Um, those are kind of indicators. There's two parts down here. If you guys are up high, this, this cut and this cut are very similar. They look the same. Mr. Jenkins, I know, trains a team. He probably can already pick up the difference between those two cuts. One is a boneless, skinless thigh. And one's a boneless, skinless drum. How do you distinguish the difference? This one has white tendons present where it sticks on that leg bone. So you also have to know some anatomy yourself as far as mu how muscles work. Okay, you go buy a whole chicken fryer. This was one chicken that I cut up a while ago. I got 10 cuts out of it. Could have got a couple more, but I was just gonna bring in 10. And so you can buy, take one chicken and get enough for practice. It's like breaking chicken down at home. I can break chicken down at home so much quicker now because I've cut up enough carcasses from this contest. I got nowhere to pop that joint and slide the knife through. So that's kind of, an, this is another area that is a very big focus for the fundamentals is part ID. 30 parts, okay? I said it while ago, 10 of those are breast cuts. There's a third. Well, you get in, you have your neck, your gizzard, liver, heart, there's 14. Feet, there's 15, that's half. Okay, you have a half of a chicken cut in half. You have a front half, you have a rear half. You learn these IDs and they are in this, man, in this book. If you get one, I know they're in here somewhere. Oh, they don't have any cuts in half. 30 total. 30. 30. You'll only have 10 at a contest. Yeah, but there's 30 total cuts. 30 total cuts. These PowerPoints I've put together over time, there's some different telltale cuts that I feel like are important. Again, that's a boneless, skinless drum, has the tendons. Um, split breast, gizzard. Okay, here's that leg quarter has that backbone. That backbone actually sits right here. And I know this might be hard for some of you guys kind of see due to some of these pictures. It makes it difficult. Um, whole breast, I get, get some in here that have names. So I feel like if you can do this, easy 50 points, somewhat do the test and get better every time you take a test, you're gonna be in the hunt as well. The other thing that I feel like is a base for a foundation is candling. Even if you don't teach poultry judging or train a team, kids want to raise eggs. You gotta know how to candle and know what to look for. The other uh, handout you guys have is the actual gauge. I didn't cut it out for you. I don't even have a cut out version for myself, but it tells you what you look at. If you want to write this down on there, my kids learned it this way, it's how I was taught. When you look inside this egg at this aerosol, and I have one egg down here, I'll kill the lights. You're more than welcome to come see what you think it is. And we'll discuss it. Um, dime. So the size of a dime. I think I threw some in my pocket. Maybe. It might just be a dime. Okay, it's a penny. It's close. Okay, size of a dime. That's a double A egg. Okay. The size of a nickel. It's going to be an A grade egg when you put the light on it. That air sells big like a quarter, quarter size is a B. Obviously, if you see through it and it's dark and chunky, can't really locate to air cell, it's usually gonna be a loss. So those are four things, 10 eggs, 50 points. I tell my kids, you drop one egg, that's all you get. 
practice. You can go to the store and buy. Today I bought A eggs. You can turn them to bees. Either you shake them, leave them out in the heat for a while, the air cell kind of expand. You can do that. Uh, farm fresh eggs, I had a, a grandparent bring in some farm fresh eggs and I had some doubles and that helped as well to train that. But if you can teach your kids size of a dime, double A, size of a nickel, A, size of a quarter is a B, no air cell, loss. So you, when you said 10 eggs, you're candling 10? You're candling 10, okay. five points an egg, okay. five points an egg. Everything, everything in this contest is going to be on 50 point basis. You're going to have 10 things in front of you. Now there's variations. I didn't lay out any boneless or bone in product. Multiple combos of that. You get everything right, it's 10 points. To me, that is, I'm giving you the things that I feel like is easy to get a team started that kind of piques that interest um, for me. There's aspects that I don't feel comfortable, and I'll be honest with that, and I'll say that. Um, and those are things that I learn as I go on from Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Littlefield, Mr. Berenberg, Dennis Mason, the guys at U of A. Um, they'll help you understand. You can be from Western Oklahoma and not have a poultry house in sight and still do this contest. A lot of the teams that compete are from the eastern side of the state. Now the benefit, and I'll use Adair County for instance, they got poultry houses. Wagner County, we don't. Just run down to the local grocery store, pick up your stuff, build that, that relationship, kind of like we have to have as ag teachers with vets. You build that relationship with that grocery store, sometimes they may give you stuff that they're pulling off the shelf because it's bad, you turn around and use. It's one thing I'll always try to utilize. Like if this was judging season, I would probably refreeze all 10 of these and pull them back out. Over time, everybody's like, oh, what about the smell? I was told a long time ago, you dip them in bleach, pat them off, throw them back in a bag. You, can, you don't have to go out every time and buy new stuff. You can utilize what you have. But that is, you have to be smart about how you utilize it. If you cut it up too bad, you can't. Um, Real quick, I'm gonna kill the lights. If you wanna come down here and try this, I'll give you the egg. It's, I cleaned it off, it has some yolk on it earlier. It is cleaned off. I have a candler here. I suggest if you're going to try to do this, you get you a candler. When I started at Kuwait and started poultry judging, I bought two of these. They don't look like those. These are Lions candlers. They were like 300 bucks from NASCO. I don't think they make these anymore. I just bought these this past year these are Speed Kings. Um, these candlers from NASCO, $400. 412 money. Utilize it, buy it. You don't have to teach poultry judging. You can teach candling in your class, like I mentioned earlier. I have one egg. Who, want, who wants to be the, the lucky one to try this or multiples? Jenkins, you want to help me out? <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, you can actually make a cheap candler, like a gallon of coffee. Yep. Can, cut a hole in the end and try to pick some kind of light. Yeah, if you have a high enough power light, you can make a homemade candler. Key, key with candling, big end of the egg, which you have right there, face the candler. Okay, you want to tilt it. The key, too, is you tilt the eggs up where you can see the aerosol. So that's, that's what right. you're looking at. Yep. So, what, what do you think that is? Uh, just barely bigger than a dime, so barely I'd bigger say than a dime. Feed, though. Okay. Probably at that point. Mr. Davis, you want to give it a chance? What am I, what am I doing? So basically, big end of the egg, hold it at an angle. Like that. That's the pocket of the air cell right there. What do you think? What am I? Well, I, I don't know what I'm doing at all. What side do you think that's a dime well, or a nickel? That? Oh, I would say a nickel. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Charlie, you want a chance? Is that all we're looking at? The air yep, cell? you're looking right there. That's it. Yep, that's it. The thing what happens sometimes so at a contest? For cracks nope. or anything else. You do that on a visual, you don't get to use the light. Oh, okay. Big ends up, you're you're ready. <laughs> Tilt your egg more out like that. Oh, okay. You're looking right there. Yeah. What do you think? 
Oh, I've been listening. Oh, to come on. Oh, yeah, but they do have like a bloody Yeah, you can kind of see it. Do what, Emma? That sounds like a bloody egg or a coal or something. Yeah, they do have a coal egg. That you, you may find, it may be deemed a loss. It'll be in there somewhere. Okay, so it is if you can find a loss. Is this Looking right there, it's stop. Is it another layer? Yep. It's an A. Okay, this. Yeah. So this egg actually, and some of you kind of on the borderline, it. When I candled it, when I first set it up, it was a double A, but I think as it sat there, kind of expanded out, got down to room temperature. It, this is an actual an A. So a nickel size aerosol. Okay, so that's what you're training them to look at. Now, Mr. Davis brought up a point a while ago. Is like, hey, do we uh, do we look at anything else? Tell if the X cracked. You do. Those are exterior grading factors. You're you're looking on top of those eggs. You're doing two things. You're grading the egg, and you're looking at defects present. So like, is it dirty? So like, we think of a dirty egg. Think of an egg that has poultry manure on it fresh out of the chicken. That's a no grade. It's dirty. You can't sell it. Okay. So there's things like that. That's where I struggle. And I have admitted that over the years that that is mine. That is the most difficult for me to understand. Um, parts, grading, test, those elements, you livestock guys in the room, you got cl classing, placing classes, classes, I put value on those. Those are 50 points. You have three classes. You'll have carcasses, which will be four carcasses, graded like livestock, left to right, one, two, three, four. But you're grading it off those USDA grading standards, A, B, C, or no grade. Live birds, hens, past production hens, is a color contest. So as an egg lay, as a chicken goes through production, lays that egg, she starts to pull that yellow pigment from her beak, her feet, her shanks start to turn white. Lighter, brighter the white, better the hen. Darker, more yellow pigment, she's still young in production. So you place that class. You don't have to handle the birds. And I, it took me a long time to understand that. You look at the feet, look at the beaks. In the cage, you never have to touch them. You place that class, unless it's close. You may want to pull them out to check. Um, broilers, like market animals, Bigger breasted bird wins. Is he longer, is he fuller, is he shorter or narrow? There's factors. There's also reasons. But if you livestock guys have to turn off the livestock reasoning, we're gonna compare everything. Break it in pairs. Top pair, bottom pair. Okay, you don't have to do a comparison of every single thing. You can just talk your tops and your bottoms and you're done. Or if it's a close middle pair, what you lead off with, middle pair, bottom. Um, I mean, Mr. Jenkins changed some livestock teams in Missouri, and so I know he's kind of familiar with that. But going back to what he said on the hens, you know, and then going back to his presentation before lunch, you know, about trying to build them up and, you know, not losing your soul. You know, this year after about the third class of hens that a young man busted, you know, I finally lost my cool a little bit. Come to find out, you know, he didn't want to come out and tell me that he had some type of color blindness. Yeah. So he wasn't seeing the pigmentation on there. I'm like, why did you? I never thought to ask. Him yeah. Again. I and to what Mr. Jenkins said, I've none of my I've had that issue with kids. I have had like maybe live livestock kids. You know, animals are moving around. And you can see the numbers, but you go to the back side of the cages. Now you're backwards. And so I have to try to train them like notching hogs. When you're notch hogs, you better pay attention to what you're doing because that one mistake could cost you. And talk about placing classes. Uh, Mr. Jenkins was the benefit of this year. He, their team wins. We're second. Talk about placing. Just like livestock judging, we drop too many points. And it was its own dagger for us as a team those are things i feel like the the things i'm trying to talk to you guys today about the foundation those things are the important things to keep you going this is the hard thing this is the hardest one is the test everything else you can pick up i always try to tell my kids the parts 
This is bread and butter. Candling, bread and butter. Placing classes, bread and butter. Reasons, 40 or higher, you're okay. And I had a girl that could talk really well. I had a girl that could talk really well. But it's how you, you have to train them on the reasons is depending what you're talking. We'll tell you at the contest what the reasons are before the contest starts. We'll get you in groups. Hey, today you're talking past production hens. So you already know. So you, you get a chance to prep. You look at the class, you get a chance to prep your reasons, you present your reasons. That is one of the reasons too, I believe some ag teachers don't try this contest is they feel like it takes a long time. There are a lot of moving parts to this contest. We'll give you up to an hour on the test, usually. Then we'll start. We try to keep the rotation as quick as possible, but where we get hung up is we do reasons in rotation. We're not like livestock place and then do reasons after, is we try to do the reasons in rotation. Um, if you guys want to come down and look at these, I can kind of explain the difference. If you uh, don't have an understanding of parts or where they might come from. Um, the other thing I want to show you guys that I don't know if I have a set. You say you can't get birds. Like I'm that way. I can't get live birds. Um, I stole this from a method. Like I just look through the book, look at your definitions for hen production. I write me instead of hen, this is your class. Place this class. Okay, now you might be wondering what's the one by one? In the book, it's going to talk about a spread that egg capacity of that hen's abdominal cavity. Well, I told you earlier, you don't have to handle the hen. If it's a non placing class, you do, do pigment. If you got to talk hen reasons, you might want to know a spread or make this spread up yourself to add to your terminology and your reasons. Like, I, and those reasons always start like this. Like this set, I place this class of past production hens. In this case, uh, four, two, three, one. Okay, now my spreads are the same. There's a chart that you guys, if you order the book or you email me, I'll give you a breakdown of this of how egg pigmentation loss occurs. And so that's where this one gets close, but that's always where I trick my kids up is you need to know where the pigmentation loss is gonna come from first for this class. So you can do things like this. You don't have carcasses, say number one, missing half inch cut on the breast. You can make classes without going to buy product if you wanna save on stuff like that. So there's things there you can reinvent the wheel to get them going where they go to a contest and they're not caught off guard. Um, and I'm not knocking anybody for doing that. I've set up a lot of contests or assisted in a lot of contests over the past several years. And it never fails that there's a team that Sal Blue shows up and you can just tell those kids don't know what they're doing. They're asking questions on, where, on what class we're on because they don't know. And so I feel like there's aspects here that we can do as teachers to prepare them instead of just showing up for that contest, kind of have a, that foundation of what's, what you're about to experience at that contest level. This kind of all I have for you guys, it, it was basically meant to be a foundational. Um, if you write this down, this is my email address. I'm you email me questions if you want copies of some of this stuff i'll send it to you i don't care i'll help anybody get better because at the end of the day it makes the competition level more successful in the poultry judging okay uh, my email is travis.odell o-d-e-l-l -L, at coweta c-o-w-e-t-a p is in public s is in school dot org you want my cell number if you want to send me a message with your email or something you want a copy of some of the stuff that I have uh, my my phone number is 405-380-5391 can you redo your email my email Kawita P is in public s is in school dot org is there not before the PS? no okay. yep just like Turner's was a Wasso PS the same thing 
west of I-35, there are invitations, which we don't have. They don't do poultry stuff. So there are there online resources or contests that we can run them through that's just to give them a clue um, to practice with? There, okay, well, you, you can do Quizlet. And this is what I stress to my kids on Quizlet. Know who made it. Because there are some schools that will make Quizlets that are not right going, oh, everybody's going to use it. And they're, okay, I've seen it. I've seen official placings on Quizlets. Kid goes, this is what this is. I'm like, no, it's not. Okay, so you use Quizlet. You can, how I found a lot of my, re my material when I first started trying to do this contest, if you Google just poultry judging CDs, there are some schools in like Indiana that had a website, had PowerPoints. Like that PowerPoint I had up a while ago, I stole that from them. So, it, and it had the key. And what I did is I just kind of jumbled up and made my own practice class of parts. Um, One last thing has some stuff. Yes. There's some stuff from Georgia, Missouri, Art University of Arkansas, U of A. They have some stuff. Um, they'll have old tests. I will tell everybody. I love the University of Arkansas's website for this aspect or Arkansas FFA. They have a national test bank for like the last five years. You can go on there and steal national tests for any contest and study. We don't have that privilege in the state of Oklahoma. Okay? And it's on national FFA. The thing I've ran into on national FFA in some categories is the answers sometimes might not be there. I think they're there now, but they had that Arkansas had the answers. So there's the stuff national, right there. The national test based on. Yes. Now. There is a. Okay. We go to nationals. We're an 18. So we should be an even year material. The deal with nationals though. In this book. Any section. Like section B. That's like a kind of introduction course. To that. Is on the test. You can pull up national tests. When I was practicing for state this year. And there were five questions from just like these introductions over parts you may want to know that so they'll put some stuff in there that you cover you wouldn't think would be a test question like less than a quarter inch of uh, crust on a patty okay that's one thing I didn't talk about the other thing bone in and bone must you can go to any grocery store and find hot wings chicken nuggets and make look at the definition like coating boy okay you know it's got to have some crust knocked off greater than quarter inch take out a knife scrape it you're good stuff stays like that some of them you may have to make like a cluster marriage like they're all frozen together as that thaws it breaks scrape some crust off stack two nuggets pack it in the hole and it'll freeze okay I, trust me you have to get creative sometimes if you can't if you don't have access to it but for you guys out west, that's what I would say is use some of that. I'll email if you want to email me. I'll email you my stuff. I don't care. I've sent it to other ag teachers. Um, I use it. I tell everybody I want this contest to grow because it is the competitive, and Charlie can answer that as well. We're a competitive group. That top three, we will all want to beat each other. And it's just any given day, it's judging. That's like I have no hard feelings that they beat me. It's judging. My kids didn't judge good that day, and that's why we did it. And so there's things there that you can utilize. Um, like I said earlier, the parts stuff, one carcass did, did 10 parts for me today. And I still had a uh, breast, breast with wings still left, or I could have cut that breast out and made a bone. Uh, a split breast basically um, I could have made I could have flipped it over it made a front half even though one half of the wing was missing on one side uh, I could have done different things with that carcass that I had uh, that carcass I bought all that stuff this morning that carcass that case of eggs I think I was in it I had some other stuff too but just the chicken stuff I was like 15 bucks is a poker score card it's the same thing pretty much for every contest. It, it's the same scorecard. It, it, inside this book, it, you want to make sure you have the card, Poultry Edition 7 card. Yeah, I think if you go on Judging Card, you look where you can order Scantrons, they're in there. 
Uh, I actually, and I'll show you a card. I have one on my deal, I believe. Se 43. Hold on. I thought I had one in here. Yep. It looks like this. It will be 478-7. Uh, Make sure to be the edition you want to use. Yep. Yep. 478-7. Um, and we'll kind of go over that card. Like, here's your reason score. Typically, we'll write in the hole in pen, in bubble. We expect the kids to bubble. Sometimes we'll have whoever's taking reasons after contest is done, bubble it all in. Uh, your placing classes, just like a livestock card, your combinations, your 24 different combinations. Your broilers, your hens, your carcasses. You have your parts grading, which is right here. You have your candling. This is where it gets tricky. You have your candling, and you have your exterior factors, where you're going to grade the egg and also give the defect that that egg may have. You got to do both. So you always have to train, train kids, bubble the grade, hit the factors. Okay, on the back you have your parts list, has the 30 parts, you just gotta know what the tens in front of you. Um, exam key, and then your bone in, bone list, very identical, and you just bubble it in. Okay. Yeah, I may have missed this, but outside of the pencils and clipboard, do they have to have anything else to take with them in the contest? You can use a calculator for the test. Calculator for the test, there is math. Now Oklahoma's different, okay? If you went to an out-of-state contest at Texas or Missouri or Arkansas, they may have their test may be worth 150 points, still 30 questions, okay? Um, Arkansas gives two sets of reasons. That's their state rule. We give one. Unless in Arkansas sets up our contest sometimes, Kevin has been known to go, oh, we're given two, okay? Um, pencil, clipboard, you get your Scantron, you get to keep your test. Some contests won't let you have your tests, or they don't want to give you the info. We've been there at some of those junior colleges. Poultry tests, you can take that test. Usually, the college is not writing the test. I, I wrote them. Uh, Mr. Stanilos, that was at Watts, is retiring. He's wrote them. Uh, U of A sent them. Berenberg's wrote them over at Lincoln, Arkansas. And so you get to take that, just tell your kid, hey, put your name on top of your test. When it's done, get your test. That gives you something to have to grow your material. Any other questions? When are the invitation contests? When are those for, Con okay. we don't have any. What okay, so on the eastern side of the state, um, ML hosts the one at Roland, usually right before the state contest, the week before. Okay. okay. Uh, Connors, I have one. NEO, I have one. Those three usually, and then state. And I might pick up one this year and host one myself, just a poultry contest there at Guida. Uh, it's something I've kicked around for the last couple of years of doing. You can go out of state. I know Mr. Jenkins slides out of state uh, to Missouri. <laughs> You can go to Wild Hog at, Art, at U of A. I don't know how, you know, you guys got to travel across. I have to get permission to leave the state of Oklahoma and approve. So it's hard for me to do some of those out-of-state ones. But also in Oklahoma, when those out-of-state ones are going on, we're stuck at the city, county fairs, district shows. It makes it very tricky to get away. And that's kind of where it struggles. So you look... That's four contests a year we did it. We went to those four. We went to Nationals. That was contest number five for us, and we're judging against teams that, have, that might have been their 15th contest. Uh, and so there's some things there. I will stress it like this. If you win the state of Oklahoma, you go to Nationals, and you're in the top ten. Poultry, U.S. Poultry and Egg, they pay an all-expense trip to Atlanta to the IPPE conference, which is all manufacturing from foreign countries, uh, U.S. Uh, all top ten teams get in that. We were fortunate enough to do that, and that was a great experience for those kids. They got to see the industry side of it, selling equipment, chemical, different products. So that's something that was my driving force at Nationals. Like, we got to be in the top 10, we got to be in the top 10. Plus, I wanted to be gold. 
And this year, you know, they get scholarships off of that. So that's another thing. You get that engagement, that success. I know the, the census today in this room so far has been that competitive, and that just drives it. And so, and the thing is, like the group this year that I had, I had two seniors. I had two younger kids, so I'll have two kids coming back, but two kids with them. You can kind of build, you know, work your way up. Like I said earlier, when we were third, first year we did it, then runner up, and then we won. And so those kids stayed together all the way through. So it's things there. You can be in the top five and be, have that success go, hey, we're top five in the state contest. If you know, if you never had that, it's like athletics. Hey, we, we were top five. Um, that's how I feel about it. That's, that's why I like it. I appreciate it, guys. Don't forget to sign in. Make sure you get your PD points. And thank you. You got any questions, email me, call me. I'll make sure to get you guys taken care of. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.